And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him. And that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. So Joseph found favor in his sight and served him. Then he made him overseer over his house, and all that he had he put under his authority. Verse 5. So it was from the time that he had made him overseer of his house, and all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. Oh, the blessing of God. Amen. When the hand of God is upon you, people who come close to you, they also receive the blessing. Amen. Hallelujah. They also receive the blessing. It reminds me when God said, you know, speaking to Abraham, you shall be blessed. And the families after you shall also be blessed. Amen. Amen. That's the blessing of God. So it was from the time that he had made him overseer of his house and all that he had that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing and the blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in the house and in the field. Thus he left all that he had in Joseph's hand and he did not know what he had except for the bread which he ate. Now Joseph was handsome in form and appearance. Joseph was handsome in form and appearance. And this is where, you know, when I was, um, talk, let me pause here a little bit. We are going to continue with self-control. In difficult times, that's where you see the evidence of self-control. It wasn't the problem that Joseph had a good appearance. He was a handsome man. He was a handsome man. It's a blessing. I said here some time ago that beauty is a blessing. That doesn't mean that if you're not beautiful as everybody else, you're not blessed. No. But there's a special blessing that is attached to that. Anybody that comes close to you, they like you. But here's the challenge as we continue to read. Okay? So Joseph was handsome in form and appearance, verse 7. And it came to pass. That after these things, that his master's wife cast longing eyes on Joseph. And she said, lie with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, look, my master does not know what is with me in this house. And he has committed all that he has to my hand. There is no one greater in this house than I. Nor has he kept back anything for me but you. <laughs> Because you are his wife. You are his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness? Listen what Joseph says. And sin against whom? God. Sin against God. Why should I do this wickedness? In the eyes of God. So Joseph remembers first of all his relationship with God. And also the master. His relationship with God and also his master. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There is no one, verse 9 again, there is no one greater in this house than I. Nor has he kept back anything from me but you, because you are his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Verse 10. So it was as he spoke to Joseph day by day. Can you imagine? Day by day. He was harassing Joseph. Day by day. He did not just ask once. Day by day. That he did not heed her to lie with her or be with her. But it happened after this time that Joseph went into the house to do his work and none of the men of the house was inside. That she caught him by his garment and said, lie with me. But he left his garment in her hand and fled and ran outside. I wonder how many young men will do that. <laughs> Think about that for a moment. First Corinthians chapter 6. 
First Corinthians chapter 6. This is the context of the Old Testament. Verse 18 to 20. Paul is saying to the Corinthian church, just like what Joseph did. He says what? Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body. But he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Who is in you? Whom you are from God and who you are not your own. For you are bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's. Last week we defined self-control. We said self-control is the ability to control oneself, in particular one's emotions, desires, especially in difficult situations. Now if you read the rest of the story, you can see that the, the young woman who wanted Joseph to sleep with her, masters, uh, Joseph's master's wife, okay? And Joseph refused. So the lady, this last verse that we read, Joseph's garment was in her hand, and she used that to lie against Joseph. And Joseph wanted to sleep with her. You will read the rest of the story. But Joseph flee. Okay? Joseph flee. But later on, obviously, the master believed the wife, and Joseph was in prison. Joseph was in prison because obviously the master believed what the wife said. Self-control in difficult circumstances. As the English dictionary defines it, and I said it last week, that we will only be able to see the evidence of self-control when you are in difficult situations. There are times I can tell you, my brothers and sisters, when you are chasing, you are looking after partner, you're looking for a partner. Okay? There's a time when you, you chase after women, for example. But there are times when women chase after you. When you're chasing after women, when they're running away from you, it's easy to flee sex away from sexual immorality. Because they don't want you anyway. Huh? It's easy to flee because nobody wants you. Nobody is desiring after you. Nobody is running after you. A man of God once told me that, you know, when you have an opportunity to sin and you do not sin, then Christianity becomes real. Then you feel it. You have the opportunity to do something and get away with it. Joseph could have done it. Joseph could have done it. And the, 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 the lady and him would be hiding you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Committing sin. And Joseph would have said, okay, I'm in a foreign land. I mean, it's an added blessing. The master loves me. The wife of the master loves me. It's an added blessing. <laughs> we can do this thing and get away with it. We can do this thing and get away with it. But the Bible says, Joseph obeyed God. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Joseph obeyed God. You know, in every relationship, it's about God and man. So Joseph did not only obey God, but he also respected his master. Isn't it? He also respected his master. So even if he forgot about God at that moment, his understanding of the relationship between him and the master would have kept him from doing that. So two things at this moment we should meditate upon. Do not underestimate a good relationship. You know, when we look at the Ten Commandments, you can see that four was really, you know, four attributed to God, but all the rest is between us. How to live with one another. If you see do not commit adultery, God doesn't want animosity between the two of you. If he says that shall not steal, it's not because of him. He wants peace between the two of you. So Joseph understood the law. 
He understood the laws of God. He knew what the wife of the, the master was asking him to do was contravention to God's law. It was contradicting God's word. And he did not want to sin against God. He respected God. He respected his word. And he also respected his master. But here's the thing. Sometimes even when you want to do things right, you still find yourself in difficult circumstances. Joseph knew of the consequences of his actions. He knew that things were not going to go well for him if he resisted this lady. Daniel knew last week that if he was going to resist eating with the, you know, the king's food, there was going to be some sort of an issue there. He knew. But what he also knew was that God was bigger than any other person. What Joseph also knew was that God was bigger than any other person. When I was reading the scripture, I paused where it says, Joseph found favor with God. Just God favored Joseph. So Joseph realized that God favored him. He was walking in the favor of God. Why would he jeopardize that relationship? Why would he jeopardize that favor for the five minutes of enjoyment? You see, this is where we struggle with self-control. We forget to look at the bigger picture. We go to get the five, ten minutes and fifteen minutes of enjoyment that you have a lifetime of suffering afterwards. May the Lord help us. May the Lord help us. And this is what we are sitting with today. You know, I like the theme of the, the, the men's uh, program that we attended yesterday, the Flame of Hope uh, Men's Ministry. Men of integrity, we really like that in our society today. Amen. Who can actually stand and say, no, I cannot, I'm not going to do this. But today what we hear, to, I, I cannot do this. But if they come day by day, day by day, we give in. Remember, the lady did not just ask once. The lady asked day by day, day by day, day by day. But Joseph was a man of integrity. A man of his word and stood, he stands. Self-control, the ability to control oneself, one's emotions, feelings, okay, emotions are feelings, temperament, desires, what you wish for. Joseph never wished, and, and he explained that to the wife. He said, look, the master gave everything under my control, except for you, except for you. So why would I do this wickedness, except for you? Everything else is under my control. Joseph understood that thou shalt not covet your neighbor's wife. Amen. He understood thou shalt not covet. You shall not desire. So he was saved from that desire. But then the lady approached him. Day by day. Pestering him. Pestering him. That's what the enemy does today to us. He doesn't only come once. You remember he tempted Jesus three times in the wilderness. The enemy understands that if you are weak in your emotions, he will pester you in that particular area. If you do not know what to wish for in your desires and the words, if you have a, a, you know, a, a, a desire that is ungodly, the enemy knows. You remember last week I said what you wish for you shall get. That's why your wishes should be according to the desires of God himself. Amen? Amen? The Bible says the Lord will bless the desires of your heart. But you have to delight in the law of the Lord. So your desires will not be misplaced. Because if you do not delight in the law of the Lord, your desires will be amiss. Amen. Your prayers will also be amiss. Why would I want to pray for something that doesn't belong to me? Amen? Amen? If your desires are in check, you will be able to pray for the right things. So self-control is about your feelings, your emotions, your desires. Amen. 
We read last week, Proverbs 25, verse 28. It says, Whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. That means you are unprotected if you lack self control. You are like a city without walls. In the older days, they used to protect these cities with high walls. You remember the walls of Jericho? So in those days, they would protect the city using these high walls, impenetrable walls. So the man who lacks self-control, who cannot control his emotions and desires, you are like a city without walls. You know what that means? It means any enemy can come and attack you. Any enemy can come and attack you from different directions. You know, we have some countries, like, like for us now in West Africa, we bordered Liberia, the war, if you've heard about Sierra Leone, 10 year civil war, some of you have read about it. We had a, we, we, well, we still do, we bordered with Liberia, where the war started, okay? The war spilled over to Sierra Leone, because there was some like, going in, in and out, you know, in, in, at the border there. And, and the, the portion where the, the Sierra Leone is reached in Diamond was very close to, to this nation of Liberia. So the war started there and they, they used that as a depot to fill the war in Liberia. And eventually the war spilled over to Sierra Leone. You know, so it appears as if there was no, no uh, strong uh, border war. You know, and, and if, you, if, you, if you are listening and watching the news, um, this um, the Trump story in America, where he wanted to build this wall to separate him, obviously, the United States, not him, US and, and Mexico, because the, the border was very porous. People were just going in and out. I'm not saying what he was trying to do was right. I'm just trying to give an example of how you protect your country from probably not necessarily um, warring enemies, but people who you think are potential dangers to you. That makes sense, okay? So I'm just trying to paint the picture how you need to protect your border. Because there are times when you won't know when enemies are coming. But if your border is well protected with, with strong, almost impenetrable walls, you can keep the enemies at bay. Does that make sense? So a man who lacks self-control is like somebody who has a porous border. Anybody can come anytime and go out. And they can come and, and, and mess around with your heart. Hmm? They will say, you know this person, uh, a, a talent is somebody who is, a, is very weak-minded. He, he doesn't have um, strong resolve. I can just come and say nice things to you and, you and you put your guard down. Does that make sense? You put your guard down. You forget about God and His Word. You forget about the relationships that you have. Some of us don't think about these things because we lack self-control. There are people we have good relationships with, but yet we take their wives, we take their husbands, we have good relationships with them, we don't think about these relationships. We also have, you know, a, a very strong relationship, the first love with God. We even forget about God. And we enter into these, these things that actually go against God's word. It's because we've let our God down. Our spirit man is, is failing us because we disobeyed God's word. So the proverb writer says, whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. A person without self-control is like a city with broken down walls. That's what the, the New Living Translation says. And we also read from the Amplified Version that takes it a little bit further. For us to get further understanding, it says like a city that is broken down without walls. In brackets, it says leaving it what unprotected. Leaving it, leaving it unprotected. It's a man who has no self-control over his spirit. And the Bible says he sets himself up for trouble. He sets himself up for trouble. A man who lacks self-control is always in danger. 
But you ask me, Pastor, we've been talking about this now for the next for the past two weeks. How can I control my emotions? How can I control my emotions? Two things is a, is a way to start. We always talk about God's word. You have to, you have to always remember God's word. You always have to think about the relationships that you have with people. This women's month, we spoke about something briefly, where some some men, and these are these are family members who will um, rape their own children. I call them their own children because if you are like an uncle, you know, and um, you know, and and and, and having. This this affairs with, with, with your, your family members in the in the home. I just do not understand. Um, that's the, 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 the least form of lack of self-control. You do not think about your brother, you do not think about your uncle, you do not think about your father. And these are happening in homes. These are happening in homes. You think it's outside of the house? No, it's inside the house. Joseph might even think that this is an Egyptian. This is the wife of an Egyptian. Even the wife of an Egyptian, Joseph had self-control and decided against it because he respected God and his word. Amen. What leads us to these things, the reason why we lose our self-control as a man or as a woman, is because we forget about who God is to us. Why would we have such a desire to do such a thing within the family? It's a curse. It's an abomination. And as I'm speaking to you, there are people who are involved in these kinds of an act. Because of lack of self-control. Not only in this country where I come from, we hear these things. We hear rape, we hear sexual abuse. They are all over the place because of lack of self-control. It's part of the fruit of the spirit. Last week we spoke a lot about, you know, how and we even mentioned and um, um, when, when, when we have family members who, who have mental health issues and, um, and the way we treat them sometimes, we, we even abuse them physically, not knowing that they're sitting with an issue that they need medical attention. We don't control ourselves. All forms of abuse is happening in our societies today. I'm saying to you, what is your relationship with God? Because if you have a relationship with God, just like what Joseph did, I'm not saying that these men of old, they also had areas where they faltered, like King David and the others. But there are moments when these, you know, these events, they teach us what it means to have self-control. If you do not think about God and His Word, your God is always down. Amen? Amen. If you do not recognize who God is to you, and allow him to rule your heart. Your God is always down. You are like a man with a broken wall. You are like a man with a broken wall. May the Lord help us. We need healing in our land. We need healing in our land. You know, one of the one of the, the texts that I wanted, I just I don't know that the Spirit of God will lead me there and will share that. It's in Judges. It's just a terrible, terrible story. I think it's in Judges 19 somewhere where there is this. Let me just talk about it briefly. What lack of self-control can be. It's just similar to what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah. 
They're in churches. You know, the Bible says it was a time when there was no king and anybody just, they were doing whatever they wanted to do. And it's very similar when you don't have, when you don't have the Lord ruling your hearts. You do these despicable things. There are times when you do these things, you even think, you don't even imagine that they are not good. Because your spirit man is so out of touch, he's so out of sync with the spirit of God. You do things so ungodly, you think that they are normal. You know, so this man, in, 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 it's, interestingly, so many things happened that were wrong in this story. In Judges, there was this Levite, that, that we don't have time, we'll, we'll, I will have gone there, but let me just explain the story a little bit. The Levites took a concubine. There are some times when the Bible will refer to, to, to the concubine as, um, as a wife, but there are times when the Bible will just go and, 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 and talk about the, the woman as, as a concubine. So, when you look at that story, it, it tells me that it seems as if, yeah, it's in Judges 19. It's, it's a long story, so that's why I don't want to, to start reading. Um, Judges, when you go home, read. This is not a, it's, it's a story not for the faint-hearted. It's a story not for the faint-hearted, but when you go home, you read it. Judges 19, 20 to 21, okay? So the story starts in Judges 19. And this Levites, I'll just try to summarize, as you can see, there are three chapters there. So the Levite has this concubine and decides to go with her, you know, on a journey. And uh, the, the father-in-law didn't want to let him go and say, stay another one night, stay another night. And, and the Levite said, no, I need to go because it's getting late. And I think it was the third or fourth day. And he allowed the, the Levites to, to go eventually. And the Levites were looking for place now to lodge because it was a long journey and, and he wanted to go to a place where there were strangers said, no, these are strangers, let me go to my brothers and he went there, nobody allowed him to, to stay in their house okay mm. and there was somebody who, who I think the Benjamin who allowed him an old man who allowed him to stay with him and he stayed with this man and all of a sudden a group of guys just came and said we wanted to have an affair. I'm using affair, you know what I mean. I want to have an affair with this man. It's a story not for the faint heart. But I'm just telling you this, this is what sexual immorality can do. It demanded that affair. And the man said, no man, you cannot do this kind of a thing. I have a daughter here, the man also has his concubine, by, and, and I don't understand why they will even sacrifice and they say, okay, no, let's push these ones outside. But long story short, they had to get the concubine of this device. The man. They abused her. And they left her for dead. The woman eventually died. This story, because of lack of self-control, and, and this despicable, despicable acts that these guys did, nearly the whole tribe of Benjamin was wiped out. Nearly wiped out. A whole tribe nearly got extinct. Not in existence anymore in the 12 tribes of Israel. Because of lack of self-control. So what they did, the Levites, you know what the Levites did when the wife or the concubine died? It's a story not for the faith hearted, but it's in the Bible. I didn't want to actually use that as a context, but the Spirit of God just led me there to just say this, how serious this is. So what the Levite did, cut up this woman into 12 pieces and sent each piece to each of the 12 tribes of Israel. Anytime I, I've read this story for the three times now, anytime I read it, you know, it's, it's, it gives me some kind of a different feeling to the depth how we can fall if we are not careful. So what it did, they called out to war and said, this thing has never happened in Israel. And anytime I make mention to this story, it's for us to understand 
how serious sexual immorality can take up. You know, it can make a society that the, how they call it, the, the godliness of a society is like it's completely wiped out. So there was like war upon war amongst the children of Israel because of this act. What was very interesting is that when they gathered against these guys, the tribes who did this, you know, they made war against them. The whole of Israel lost the war twice. The third time they had to go and ask the Lord. These guys did a respectable thing, but now we are losing the war against them. What is happening? Long story short, they gathered more men and they went after the, the Benjamins. They didn't even want to give them even wives. A whole time was almost lost because of sexual immorality. So I'm not surprised that Paul says it in the New Testament that we have to flee sexual immorality. Because the lack of self-control makes us do such things. And we have enmities in families today because of this. If you listen to the news, even people in high, high eclipse of our societies, such things have happened. What helps us to have self-control? This is where we are going to end. So you won't think that it's all a doom and gloom. No, it's not. Last week we mentioned and we are repeating that you have to value God's word. You have to believe that he's the one who protects and provides for you. Amen? He's the one who protects and provides for you. So even if you resist to have a you know, and I fear with anybody, you know, you, you refrain from, from, from having certain friends who will always lead you to, to, to consume alcohol that takes you out of your normalcy. We talked about it last week. Even if you have to cut some relationship off, you will have better ones. You don't have to worry. If a particular relationship is always making you, you lose your guard, huh? cut that relationship off. It's not a godly one. If that relationship you are not bringing an influence for the person to, be, to come where you are, if the person is dragging you where they want to go and it's on, on, an ungodly place, you have to watch your space and cut it off. Because let me tell you, the Bible says if you are in the midst of ungodly people, because the Bible says ungodly association, it corrupts good character. It's not Pastor Edith said it. It's the one. Some relationships you have to cut off because they are not good for you. The moment you are in this company, you lose your normalcy. You are out of your senses. Your spiritual life goes down. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 7. Let's go there quickly. You know, it's so, it's so interesting that um, there are certain things that we, we take for granted and we, we just say, oh, he's, he's, my, he's, my, he's my friend, he's my buddy, he's my BFF. But you look at your spiritual life, it's not going anywhere. The moment you get into such company, some companies is high and by. It's high and by. Amen? Amen? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not in your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. Hallelujah. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. <laughs> I was saying this out of my head right now because I, I forgot my Bible. Interesting. I'm using somebody else's Bible. So it's the, this print is very small. Even with my glasses, I can't find where I'm looking. <laughs> but we thank the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Trust in the Lord with all your hearts 
And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Amen. And he will make your path straight. Amen. Verse 7 says, Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. Amen. Flee sexual immorality. Hallelujah. Flee sexual immorality. So what do we need to take home today? As it was with Daniel in Babylon, Joseph was protected in prison. Pay attention to this, people of God. Brother Paul, pay attention to this. So I've, I've painted this picture that is not good for us to meditate upon this morning about what sexual immorality can do. But what is the opposite side of it? When you are able to, 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 to acknowledge God and His Word, He protects you and He provides for you. Last week, what do we see? When Daniel refused to eat the, 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 the delicacies of the king, God provided for him. Amen. In fact, God elevated him. Joseph, you would think that when he flee, okay, when he ran away from Potiphar's wife, that would have been the end of Joseph. He was imprisoned. But yet, the Bible says, God was with him. Anytime you sacrifice for God, He draws you closer to Him. Amen. But you have to sacrifice. Amen. Amen. Look, the Bible says, the Lord has overcome the world. He has overcome the enemy. But the flesh, you have to put under control. It's your job. Amen? Amen. The Holy Spirit will bring to your understanding His Word. We to remember his word, but you have to take the step to move away. You have to decide to move away. There are certain, you know, I always talk, even marriage couples, when I come to marriage couples, I tell them, marriage, <laughs> even though the Bible says, husbands love your wives, isn't it? But you don't get into marriage only because of love. You get into marriage primarily because the Bible says so. Secondly, you get into marriage because it's a commitment that you make. Amen. Let me tell you something that will shock you. You got married because of love. There's going to come a time in your life you're not going to feel that love the way you felt it the first time. Hey. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. I love my wife. I love my husband. Some days come. You look at your husband, you ask yourself, how did how did I end up with this one? <laughs> you think it's a joke, it's not. You've been married now for 28 years. I got married because of no, you got married. Because of commitment. Because commitment, you understand the law of God. It makes you stay. Even when you're not feeling the law. <laughs> eh? I'm telling you, it's true. Sometimes you look at the wife, you look and say, <laughs> You look at the husband and say, How did I end up with this one? It happens. So the law. It's like it's like it's like electric when it's inspiring. <laughs> it's it's not it's not as rosy as it used to be. But you see, that's the moment self-control should kick in. You control yourself. I've committed, I've made a promise to God. Huh? <laughs> okay, let me move on quickly from this. Hallelujah. Amen. So as it, as it was with Daniel in Babylon, Joseph was protected even in prison. Listen to this. He was promoted in prison and he was favored in prison. 
He ran away from sexual immorality. He felt the pain. Anytime you refuse to bow down to things of the enemy, you feel the pain. But the joy that you will feel afterwards because of your obedience is greater and sweeter and higher than that sacrifice that you made in the flesh. Amen. Because what happens here? Joseph was protected in prison, was promoted in prison, and was favored in prison. In prison. Because of something that he did not do. He sacrificed that pleasure for God. Verse 19. Genesis 39, 19. It says, So it was, when his master heard the words, which his wife spoke to him, saying, Your servant did did to me after this manner, that his anger was aroused. Then Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were confined. And he was there in the prison, verse 21. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy. And he gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners who were in the prison. Hey, the favor of God. Hallelujah. When you are obedient to God, you will never go wrong. It might not be rosy, it might not be fine now because you're feeling the pain. But the time is going to come when you will feel the blessing. Amen. Joseph respected God, obeyed God, valued the relationship. And this is what happens. Verse 21 again. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy. And he gave him favor in the sight of the people of the prison. Verse 22. And the people of the prison, <laughs> listen to this. How did the, the, the prisoner, the keeper of the prison, know that Joseph, the Lord was with him? How did he know that? And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand. All the prisoners were in prison. Whatever they were doing there, it was his doing. So Joseph was also ruling over them in prison. The keeper of the prison did not look into anything that was under Joseph's authority because the Lord was what? Was with him. And whatever he did, the Lord made it to prosper. The second thing we have to go with this morning is this. God will restore you to your position of influence again. Amen. If you lose it, if you say, like I said last week, if you refuse to change this figure 10 to 100 and your income might not go to the level where you will be able to buy big cars and big house or whatever, sacrifice. Sacrifice. Obey God. Do not do it. If the Lord is going to elevate you, He will do it. Hallelujah. 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 You don't have to change anything. You don't have to be dishonest anywhere. Exhibit that self control. There is, there, is, there, is, there is a reward for it. There is a reward for it. You do not need to be, you know, you, 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 you do not need to be, how did I call this? Think about the, the immediate gratification, satisfaction, okay? Deprive that immediate, that immediate satisfaction, that immediate pleasure. Maintain your relationship with God. If Joseph, if Joseph did not keep his self-control, he would not have even been able to to, to, to accomplish his destiny. You see, this is how it gets. Because of lack of self-control, some of us will lose our destiny. That's how serious it can become. Okay? His destiny will have cut short. Let's go to Genesis chapter 41. This is where we will end. And let's get some, some, some issues here. Okay, let's get some points out of this, this, this part. So we are saying that God will restore you to your position of influence. 
You do not need to be latching onto immediate gratification and immediate pleasure. Okay? Maintain your relationship with God, and your destiny will not cut short. Let's go to Genesis chapter 41, verse 9 to 16. Then the chief butler spoke to Pharaoh, saying, I remember, this is now Joseph coming out of prison. So he was protected, he was blessed, even in prison. But here is it. The tail part of this whole issue. Because fleeing from sexual immorality got him into prison. Because he obeyed God. He sacrificed his flesh. He sacrificed immediate satisfaction and immediate pleasure. Okay? For an eternal um, blessing. Then the chief God that spoke to Pharaoh said, I remember my faults this day. Verse 10. Genesis chapter 41, okay? Verse 10. When Pharaoh was angry with his servants and put me in custody in the house of the captain of the guard, both me and the chief baker, we each had a dream in one night. Here alive, each of us dreamt according to the interpretation of his own dream. Now, now there was a young Hebrew man with us there. A servant of the captain of the guard. And we told him, and he interpreted our dreams for us. To each man, he interpreted according to his own dream. And it came to pass. Just as he interpreted for us, so it happened. He restored me to my office, and he hanged him. Verse 14. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph. Hey, the blessings of God. Amen. The favor of God. But again, because of self control. And they brought him quickly out of the dungeon. And he shaved and changed his clothing and came to Pharaoh. And to Pharaoh said to Joseph, And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have had a dream, and there is no one who can interpret a similar story to Daniel, isn't it? But I have heard it said of you that you can understand a dream to interpret it. So Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not me. God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. Amen. Hey, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 37 of 41. So the advice was good in the eyes of Pharaoh, in the eyes of all his servants. And Pharaoh said to his servants, Can we find such a man, such a one as this, a man in whom is the Spirit of God? Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Inasmuch as God has shown you all this, there is no one as discerning and as wise as you. Listen to these people of God. And this is because of his obedience and self control. This is what happens. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, See, I have sent you all over the land of Egypt. All over the land. Verse 40, verse 40, let's go to verse 40. You shall be over my house, and all over my people shall be ruled according to your word. Only in regard to the throne, I will be greater than you. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, See, I have sent you over all the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh took his signet ring off his hand and put it on Joseph's hand. And he clothed him in, in garments of fine linen and put a gold chain around his neck. And he hired the giant and the second child which he had. And they cried out before him, Bow the knee. So he sets him over all the land of Egypt. I love to be God's word. Hallelujah. Amen. You see the reward? Amen. This is what you receive when you obey God. This is what you receive when you maintain the relationship between you and me. Amen. God will bless you immeasurably when you obey His word. Self control is one of the fruits of the Spirit. It's part of the school to put on speed. You don't have to count him out and say, okay, well, now I have self-control, but I don't have love and I don't have peace. I decided to start from the back because self-control is such, you know, we've, we've had conversations when we, before we preached the, the, the vision about love, 
We spoke a lot about love. I think you have a quite a good foundation and context what the Lord is saying to us about the fruit of the Spirit. I decided to deal with self-control now because I see it, you know, in our lives. It affects us. And you know, and it, 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 it cuts off our, 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 our destiny. There are people who you see, they are, they are in their prime because of lack of self-control. Where the Lord wanted to take them, they could not reach. They could not reach. So self-control is very key to them. Hallelujah. Yeah. It's very key to them. In the church, wherever you find yourself, outside of the church, you know, um, as a matter of fact, your, your relationship with God should be seen amongst outsiders much more so you'll be able to see the difference. Because if you do the things as other people do in the world, there is no, there is no attraction, there is no influence. The Bible says, let's, let's, let's people see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let people see your good works. This is not about, you know, I'm a child of God or whatever. It works. The things that you say, the things that you do. How you guard your spirit, man. How you hold yourself. You influence other people. They will say there's something there was something different about this brother, about this sister. So there are moments in your life when people are running after you. When you are broke, you don't have anything, the favor of God is upon you, but it's not seen by everybody. Huh? People are running away from you. But the moment the favor of God starts to, you know, it show, it's, 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 it's very evident. You, you, you are blessed materially. Hmm? There are people who used to not even say hi to you. They come closer now to you. Then the temptation increases. Yesterday, you know, the man of God was talking about men of integrity. The moment you, you have, a, 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 you know, before you used to come, you used to walk to church. Now God has blessed you. You don't have time for church. Your Saturdays now are in the beach instead of at church. You get what I'm saying? We're speaking to men. And it's very important for, 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 for someone like this to come, you know, to, to, to touch the hearts of men. To say, no, we can do this. We can be men of integrity. We can have, you know, self-control. We can, we can be able to guard ourselves and people will be able to see that this person, if he says yes, it means yes. Amen. If he says no, it means no. Amen? Amen? Many a times, the young men that are here, right now when you don't have anything working for you, you are calling this, this, this. <laughs> you know, you are asking women, out. nobody's going out with you. Nobody's answering your call, nobody's returning your texts. The moment now you are, you are married, you are in the house of God, you are serving and everything, then that lady that you are chasing started calling you and started asking you. you know, Self-control now in difficult circumstances. Now you see yourself, okay, now I can do this. Now they are chasing me. I used to chase them, but now they are chasing me, just like Joseph. But the Bible says, flee sexual immorality. Amen. It's not only about sexual immorality. We've spoken about you know, um, alcohol consumption, drugs, and, and, and you know, even, even, you know, there are so many things in our societies today that um, we, we need to, self-control is so important. And um, you, you, you are out of this, but the company that you keep will drag you into it again. You know, so there are certain people, there are certain relationships, you need to say, no, I'm not going to continue with this relationship because it's actually dragging me down. It's affecting my spiritual life. So, Spirit of God, I pray. I pray this morning. As we have listened to your word, oh God, it's such a difficult sermon to preach. Because it touches on issues that are affecting us, affecting our young men, affecting our old men, affecting our young sisters, affecting our older sisters. We pray, Spirit of God. We pray, Abba Father. 
Give us the heart, O oh God, to be able to resist temptations from the enemy. I pray, O oh Spirit of God, that we shall be firm in our faith, O oh God. We shall hold on to your word. We shall all Father respect the relationships that we have. Let us value, O oh God, one another. Let us be steadfast in your word, in your ways, in your will. I thank you, Abba Father. Touch the hearts of your people this morning. Let us understand, O oh God, Father, it's better, O oh Father, for us to deprive our flesh of these earthly, materialistic things. Things, O oh God, that will affect our spiritual life. Our relationship with you, O oh God. I pray for all the young men and all the young women, O oh God. To the sound of my voice, O oh Father. That they shall exhibit the fruit of the Spirit. That they shall maintain self-control. We shall not be people like who have their hearts and spirits that are like broken walls. I pray, our oh Father. That we shall keep us, O oh Father, in your word, Spirit of God. Help us. Yes, Lord. Help our teenagers, O oh God. Help our children, Father. Let them understand who you are, O oh God. Joseph was a young man. Was still be able to manifest and exhibit self-control. The Bible says, worship your Lord. Remember your Creator. In the days of your youth, Paul was speaking to Timothy and says, No one shall despise your youth, but you shall be an example of the believer in word. You shall be an example of the believer in purity. I pray, Spirit of God, for our young men and women who have this high level of temptation, O oh Father, in the area of sexual immorality. I pray, Spirit of God, for our communities, O oh God, that they shall glorify your name, O oh Spirit of God. They shall glorify your name and not their bodies. Our bodies, O oh Father, are a temple to you. Let us use our bodies, O oh Father, as living sacrifices to you. I thank you, O oh Father God. I thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray this morning. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Spirit of God. Thank you, Spirit of God. In the coming, in the coming um, weeks, um, we will be talking about um, baptism. Those of us who haven't um, been baptized, I know um, Sister Brown might, might explain, but I just want to emphasize it, that um, uh, please uh, get your names down, get the people ready who haven't been baptized, hallelujah. Um, those who haven't um, given their names, please do so. We want to organize some baptism sessions. Those who also taken membership, the, the forms actually, who filled in the forms, we want to officially and welcome you all. So we are going to go through the forms. So if you haven't filled the forms in yet, please do so and, and submit them to, to Sister A. Amen. And we want to, to do those things. And we continue to commit our brothers and sisters who are still um, in the, going through challenges you know, of, of self-control. It's such a big topic in our country today. Sexuality, self-control, um, you know, and, and in the area of we, we are also going to have conversations with the singles. Okay, I, I, people say this, those who are, are planning to get married. It's not easy to, to we, you know, we are, we, are, we are speaking this and we are allowing, we are, we are trusting the Spirit of God to, to touch us, to help us. But um, we know it's not easy. But if you sacrifice, if you commit your body to the Lord, you will get the reward just like Joseph. You will get the reward just like Daniel. And parents, please let's keep on speaking to our, our, our children. You know, we, um, I, we, we, have, we have young adults, you know, Joseph and Josephine, where they are, they might be here this summer. We always talk to them. When you sacrifice for God, 
when you keep yourself, you hold yourself, you focus on, on, on God, a blessing will come. A blessing will come. It's very hard to deprive yourself, deprive the flesh of immediate gratification and satisfaction. Sometimes people come and just tell you, you know, you look, um, are you working out? So you, you know, you look nice and they say, it's the glory of God. Amen? It's the glory of God. Don't use that as an enticement. People will say all good things um, to you just to get you to a place for you to let your guard down. You don't want to be like a person who doesn't have control over his state, who doesn't have self-control. May the Lord bless us this morning. Amen. 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 Amen.